Hi friends, welcome back to another episode of Generation Tech. My name is Alan. They say that Woodrow Wilson's Treaty of Versailles after World War I pushed post-war Germany too hard for reparations and led directly to an environment that allowed for Hitler and his Nazis to take over. They also say that Woodrow Wilson's loans to the Russian Empire ultimately helped keep the Russian Empire in the war too long destroying their military and allowing the Bolsheviks to take over and start their 75-year experiments with communism, which ended up killing more people than all the wars of the 20th century combined. The point I'm trying to get across to you guys is that while fighting a war is difficult and very dangerous, the post-war period is equally as challenging to navigate through. Mistakes like the ones that Woodrow Wilson made ended up causing the world a tremendous amount of hardship and instability that we still feel today. In the Star Wars universe, we have a similar issue arise during the end of the Galactic Civil War, during the peace negotiations between the New Republic and Imperial Remnant, the Galactic Concordance Treaty was signed and officially ended the war, but ultimately created a new set of problems that would lead to future conflicts. Let's first set the scene. In 4 ABY, the Emperor lays an intricate trap for the Rebel Alliance over the forest moon of Endor. The Galactic Empire's half-complete second Death Star is the bait, and a massive fleet of Star Destroyers wait for the Rebellion to come to spring their trap. But instead of ensnaring the Rebels into a battle they cannot win, the unthinkable happens. Darth Vader betrays the Emperor and throws him down a reactor shaft Meanwhile, a ragtag group of rebels and indigenous bear monkeys manage to take out the Imperial garrison guarding the battle station's shield, allowing rebel snub fighters to enter the second Death Star and destroy it from within. This was very much the beginning of the end for the Galactic Empire, and to commemorate this great victory, the Rebel Alliance actually switched their name and reorganized themselves as the New Republic. Without an emperor to unite them, the Galactic Empire and its military forces quickly fell into infighting as Moffs and Admirals fought each other for control. Out of the wreckage emerged one man named Gallius Rax, who claimed to be the counselor of the Empire. He basically takes over the Imperial Remnant. Gallus Rax would lead the majority of the remaining Imperial forces to a desert planet known as Jakku for one final showdown with the New Republic. The battle was hard fought, especially in low orbit where several New Republic ships collided with Imperial ships, bringing the colossal masses burning down to the surface. Eventually, the New Republic would gain the upper hand and defeat the remaining Imperial forces on the planet, permanently ending the Galactic Empire's threat to the New Republic. Now, following the death of the Emperor, the line of succession technically went to the Grand Vizier, Masamita. Masamita was a willing bureaucrat and was sort of like the chief operating officer for the entire empire. He was essentially in charge of the day-to-day -day logistics that made sure the empire ran smoothly. But Masamita was politically weak and lacked the ambition or respect from his peers to properly consolidate power around him. And so there he was ruler of the empire from the imperial throne on Coruscant in name only. The reality was Gallius Rax had already secretly consolidated the Imperial Remnant's remaining forces and had no plan to share that power with Masamita. Meanwhile, on Coruscant, the local population was in open revolt over food shortages and the death of the Empire. Masamita was essentially trapped inside of his own office at this point. What remained of the Imperial forces on the planet were now all gathered around the Imperial City. Masamita had essentially lost control of the entire planet. Now, the Grand Vizier was a pragmatic and cowardly individual, and so he immediately sought to surrender to the New Republic. The problem was now that not even Chancellor Mon Mothla wanted to broker peace with a man who was essentially besieged inside of his own office. The New Republic wanted proof that he actually had control over the Imperial Remnants. To make matters worse, Gallius Rax sensed Masamita's betrayal and basically sent his own soldiers to keep Masamita under house arrest. These were pretty dark times for the Grand Vizier, and he even contemplated suicide, but then something miraculous happened. The disastrous defeat of the Imperial Remnants at the Battle of Jakku. All of a sudden, Masamita re-emerged as not only an important Imperial figure, but essentially the only one left. Now, 
Mon Mothma was a consummate pacifist. In her earlier years in the old Republic Galactic Senate, she would constantly be fighting against Supreme Chancellor Palpatine's Clone Wars. Along with several other members of the Loyalist Committee, Mon Mothma was not only outspoken against the war, she also fought to limit the Supreme Chancellor's power and funding for military interventionism. When the Republic fell and turned into the Empire overnight, Mon Mothma maintained that the only way to resist the Emperor was by using the governmental system set in place. It was only after being branded a traitor by the Galactic Empire did Mon Mothma finally resign from the Imperial Senate and become a voice and leader for the Alliance to restore the Republic. Mon Mothma would serve the Rebellion well. She understood that violence alone could not really turn the war against the Galactic Empire and deliver success for the Rebellion. She realized that this coming battle of the Empire could not be won through just conventional means. The Rebellion needed to maintain their high moral ground and also win ideological battles that destroyed the invincibility of the Empire and the fear it used to control its populace. She realized that ultimately only by starting a mass uprising in the Galactic Empire could she actually defeat the Empire. In the earlier days of the Alliance to Restore the Republic, Mon Mothma would kick out extreme groups like Saw Gerrera's partisans, who were obsessed with killing Imperials and causing as much physical damage as possible to the Empire. She realized that the partisans had begun acting like a terrorist organization and quickly cut them off. Even in 5 ABY, just months before the New Republic defeated the Empire and were chasing the Imperial remnants across the galaxy, Mon Mothma was worried about the growing size of the New Republic military and looking at ways to demilitarize already. And so when the Empire finally met the New Republic for peace talks, the Empire was led by the pragmatic coward known as Masmita, whereas the New Republic was led by the ideological pacifist known as Mon Mothma. The first agreement signed by both sides was the Imperial Instrument of Surrender. It marked the initial armistice between both factions and a formal end to hostilities between the two sides. The Empire was forced to relinquish all of its power and territory in most of the galaxy and at the same time had to follow the terms set by the Galactic Concordance Treaty. Now this is where the problems started coming up. At this point, Masamita would have agreed to almost anything. He had no bargaining power and personally just wanted the entire ordeal to end. So this is very much a one-sided negotiation, which is never really a good thing. Mon Mothma, who wanted a swift return to peace and stability, set out a series of rules that forced the Imperial Remnants into a very awkward position. On one hand, Mon Mothma declared that all surviving Imperial officers would be designated as war criminals and would face trials in the New Republic upon their capture. Now, civilian functionaries like Masamide would be granted conditional pardons based on the individual. At the same time, the Imperial Navy was allowed to maintain its existence as long as they remained in the borders of the new Imperial Remnant territory in the core of the galaxy. The problem with these stipulations was that a large percentage of the Imperial Navy had not been captured or even surrendered to the New Republic. Therefore, most of these rules did not really apply to them and were not enforceable by the New Republic military. Most officers in the Empire obviously chose not to voluntarily surrender and face war crime charges. Instead, they just fled to the protected regions within the Imperial Remnant space. And so the Imperial Instruments of Surrender, instead of ending the war, really just started a new Cold War between the New Republic and the Imperial Remnant. After signing the Imperial Instruments of Surrender, Masamita would go on to sign the Galactic Concordance Treaty. This would lead to the disbandment of the Palpatine era government and force Masamita to step down from his position as well. It also put a ban on any future recruitment and mobilization of stormtroopers and also disbanded the Empire's network of Imperial Academies. The treaty would also return Coruscant to the New Republic and establish the boundaries for the new Imperial Remnant territories in the inner and core regions of the galaxy. Many factions of the Imperial Remnant would disavow the Galactic Concordance Treaty and continue fighting against the New Republic anyway. The main problem with this treaty once again was the fact that the Empire did not have a legitimate representative at the table. Masamita was not accepted by the majority of the Imperial Remnant as their leader, and therefore anything he signed was considered not acceptable. Now, despite the pockets of resistance that had formed all across the galaxy, the New Republic Senate now believed that the Imperial Remnant was no longer a threat and they were once again focused with just running the galaxy.
The New Republic Senate was so focused on a permanent peace that they didn't see the Imperial Remnant as a threat. Instead, they saw their own military as the largest threat in the galaxy. Mon Mothma would propose the Military Disarmament Act, which would severely limit the operations and makeup of the Republic Defense Fleet and Army. Its ultimate goal was reducing the federal military's size by 90%. Mon Mothma wanted the New Republic to return to a peacetime democracy that used political pressure to get what it wanted instead of using military pressure. The idea was to prevent the Galactic Empire from rising out of the New Republic once again. The funding that was used for the federal military would be redirected to local and planetary defense forces. The Disarmament Act would also prevent Imperial Remnant forces from making purchases from New Republic military contractors. Now, ultimately, Mon Mothma made three huge mistakes. First, by labeling all Imperial officers war criminals, she essentially made it impossible for a huge portion of the Imperial military to normalize its relationship with the New Republic. These officers also held the real power within the Imperial Remnant and took a large amount of enlisted men and women with them into the Imperial Remnant territory. Second of all, all of the requirements she made on the Empire were not really enforceable because the New Republic had not occupied the Imperial Remnant territory. Third, when she agreed to demilitarize the New Republic's federal forces, the Imperial Remnant did not, leading to a rapid change in the power dynamics between the New Republic and the Imperial Remnant within just a few decades. Mon Mothma was a terrific wartime leader, and she had the vision to realize that the Rebellion could not really face the Empire in conventional battles until it grew larger in size. This is what ultimately allowed the Rebel Alliance to survive as long as it did, but as you can see, her vision of a galaxy in peace was completely bungled up and poorly executed. And this is why the First Order would reemerge 30 years later and essentially destroy the New Republic in one swift blow. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button down below so you don't miss out on the rest of our awesome content. And as usual, thanks for joining us today. If you're watching this, you are Generation Tech.